Electrolysis of Copper Bromide Solution by kscience.com Electrolysis of copper to bromide solution is carried out using a cell or power pack, where the positive terminal is on the left and the negative terminal is on the right. A wire is connected from the negative terminal to the negative electrode and the positive electrode is connected to a wire which is then connected to the positive terminal of the cell or power pack. The negative signs on this electrode shows how this is the negative electrode and the positive signs on this electrode show how this is the positive electrode. The negative electrode is known as the cathode and is always connected to the negative terminal of the cell or power pack. And the positive electrode is always known as the anode which is connected to the positive terminal of the cell or power pack. Copper 2 bromide has a chemical formula of CuBr2. It consists of one Cu2 plus ion and two bromide one minus ions. As we're dealing with the electrolysis of copper bromide solution, the copper bromide has to dissolve in water. The molecular formula of water is H2O. And we can represent this using a particle diagram as shown here. The hydrogen and oxygen atoms are held together by strong covalent bonds. Now when any ionic compound that is soluble in water dissolves, the water ionizes and this is what happens here as well. The water ionizes into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So in copper bromide solution, the ions present will be hydrogen cations, hydroxide anions, copper cations, and bromide anions. So for electrolysis to take place, we need a container to hold the electrolyte. And the electrolyte is the liquid water and the solid copper bromide, which are mixed. And then the copper bromide dissolves to form CuBr2. AQ. AQ means aqueous, copper bromide solution, which contains four ions as shown here Cu2, Br, H, and OH. This is copper bromide solution. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Let's now focus on what happens to the ions in the electrolyte. The ions are now free to move in the electrolyte. The positive cations are attracted to the cathode and the negative anions are attracted to the anode. Opposites attract, the same charges repel. Copper forms at the cathode where the Cu2 plus becomes Cu, copper atoms. The copper cations form copper atoms at the cathode. We can show this on the equation how CuBr2 forms Cu and then S for solid. Orangey brown copper forms around the cathode. Solid copper forms around the cathode. At the anode, the bromide anions form bromine molecules. This appears as a reddish brown liquid and it is dissolved bromine appearing around the anode. We can show this on the equation by adding in Br2 Aq for aqueous as the bromine is dissolved. Notice how the hydroxide and hydrogen ions are left in solution. They can easily ionize back into water forming the simple molecule that water is. The word equation is copper to bromide breaks down to form copper and bromine. Using water to electrolyze copper bromide is much more practical compared to using a lot of heat to melt it until it is molten. The advantages of using water include it saves money, 
This is due to less electricity being needed and no heat being needed to melt the ionic compound. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Pause the video here to practice the keywords. The answers will follow. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. If stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. And don't forget to visit kscience.com for more videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.